Hi, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to our event, The Dangers of Iron Deficiency at All Ages, with our guest, Caitlin Vanderheg of Kidstar Nutrients. My name is Dion, and I am the nutritionist here at Choices Markets in Abbotsford at Claiborne. So before I introduce our speaker, I'm just going to go over a couple of quick housekeeping items. Uh, to take part in tonight's chat, uh, you can do that by logging into the YouTube chat. So you do need to have an account. So log in now and then you can ask questions and I'll read them out at the end. If you don't have an account, there is time. Just quickly sign up for one and then you can take part in the chat. After the event, you will be sent an email if you signed up to uh, watch with us live. That email is a quick survey. We're going to ask you a few questions, and then we're going to ask you for your physical mailing address. And that is because we want to send you a nutrition book, and that will come by mail. So please look for that email after the event. And then again, we're going to ask you for your physical mailing address so we can send you a coupon. And to find out about future events, you can find those online at choicesmarkets.com. And we also have posters up in the store. So we will be having a few more events uh, this spring as we fall into uh, summer. We usually take the summer off. Our nutrition services, though, are back in full swing. So please reach out to your in-store nutritionist if you'd like to sign up for a free consultation or a nutrition tour. You can do that online at choicesmarkets.com as well, or you can sign up at your local choices um, at customer service, or maybe you'll find us around in the store. So with that, I'm going to introduce our speaker tonight. Caitlin Vanderhag is the president and CEO of Kidstar Nutrients. Her experience spans over a decade of supply chain and ingredient sourcing in the natural product industry. Caitlin holds a bachelor's degree in education from UBC and social sciences from SFU. Caitlin's mission is to help educate parents about kids' nutrition and provide clean nutrients for kids and families. Caitlin co-founded Kidstar Nutrients with one of her daughter, sorry, when one of her daughters was diagnosed with iron deficiency and she could not find a nutrition supplement that wasn't full of junk. As a mother of three daughters, Caitlin advocates for clean ingredients in kids' foods and supplements. She is a recipient of the 2022 RBC Ones to Watch Award. So it's great to have you here, Caitlin. Welcome. Thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here. And thank you, everybody else, for attending tonight. So I will hand it over to you, and you can just go on and entertain us. <laughs> Perfect. So as, um, as Dion mentioned, I grew up in the natural health industry, and my mother was always adding some supplement to our food. And she even had our school start, start a veggie hot dog option. I was also lucky enough to be surrounded by other influential health advocates growing up, stressing the importance of feeding our families nutritious foods with great quality supplements to help fill in those gaps. After university, I worked for 10 plus years alongside my mother at Lorna Van Rijk Health Solutions, managing the supply chain from raw material to finished product. I had the opportunity to create great quality products for adults, so I knew we could make products for kids that they liked taking and that parents liked the ingredients. In 2020, I launched Kinstar Nutrients because I was looking for better quality products for my family, and I knew other parents out there were as well. So let's jump into iron. What is iron? Iron is a mineral that is naturally present in many foods, added to some food products through fortification and available as a dietary supplement. Iron is an essential component of hemoglobin, an erythrocyte, erythrocyte a red blood cell, protein that transfers oxygen from the lungs to the tissues. As a component of myoglobin, another protein that provides oxygen, iron supports muscle metabolism and healthy connective tissue. Iron is also necessary for physical growth, neurological development, cellular functioning, and synthesis of some hormones. So iron, blood, and oxygen. So along with vitamin B12 and folic acid, Iron is essential to, to the creation of new and healthy red blood cells. If we do not have enough iron stores, the ferritin, we cannot make enough healthy red blood cells. When red blood cells levels drop, it is known as anemia. So red blood cells are very important because they are what transports the oxygen around the body. Hemoglobin, an iron-containing protein, is found in each red blood cell. As red blood cells move through the lungs, the hemoglobin picks up oxygen and carries it to every cell in the body. 
After releasing the oxygen, red blood cells pick up carbon dioxide, which is carried back to the lungs and is exhaled. Here we are showing what normal and anemic blood looks like. When we become anemic, we have too few red blood cells. We are no longer getting enough oxygen to our cells. Because of this, our heart has to work harder to get the blood and oxygen around the body. This can lead to shortness of breath, heart palpitations, and dizziness. So with iron in the immune system, this is a big topic. Without adequate ferritin, our stored iron, our bodies cannot make healthy red blood cells. With fewer red blood cells, our organs and tissues do not get as much oxygen. A lack of iron affects the body's natural defense system. Iron is necessary for immune cells to increase and mature, particularly lymphocytes. Lymphocytes are a type of immune cell that is made in the bone marrow and is found in the blood and the lymph tissues. So we have lots of functions of iron. So there's, here are three more. Detoxification. Iron is used for detoxification. It helps ensure heavy metals stay at bay. If you have low iron, the heavy metals can start increasing and taking over in the body. Hormones. Iron is used to make estrogen and progesterone. And neurotransmitters, chemical messengers in the body. Iron is used to make GABA and serotonin, your happy hormones. Iron deficiency is the most common nutrient deficiency worldwide. This affects all countries around the world, and especially here in Canada. We looked at this report in the Journal of Pediatrics and Child Health, where they found iron deficiency in Canadian infants and children is classified as a severe health concern. Not a moderate, not a mild, but severe. So what are the numbers like across Canada? 24% of middle-class Vancouver infants are iron deficient. 63% of middle-class Edmonton infants are iron deficient. 60% of middle-class Montreal infants are iron deficient. And 50% of middle-class Halifax infants are iron deficient. These are huge numbers since we know that over 5% is a severe health concern. And this also shows us that your socioeconomic status does not matter when it comes to iron deficiency. Let's look at the different age groups that iron deficiency affects. Babies have enough iron stores for six months, but this is based on mother having adequate iron stores before and during pregnancy and no complications at birth. After six months, they need about 10 milligrams per day of iron from the diet. This is when we start introducing solids to babies with an emphasis on iron rich foods. Anemia in infants causes brain and motor skill development concerns. If you had a difficult delivery or had a low APCAR result at birth, your child may have had blood work done, which can then catch a possible deficiency very early on, and it would be addressed with a, a pediatrician. In children, low iron impacts growth, ability to learn, behavioral problems, low appetite, impaired immunity, more infections, and a lack of energy. Iron is essential for the growth and development of children, and iron deficiency and iron deficiency anemia can have lasting effects on a child's development if not addressed quickly. Untreated iron deficiency can lead to behavioral problems and difficulty learning. In the US, a blood test is routinely done between nine months and 18 months of age to screen for iron deficiency. In Canada, we do not proactively check for iron deficiency until the signs and symptoms appear. In our teens, 10 to 20% of girls are depleted or iron deficient. Their mood and energy can be affected. So they might not just be moody teenagers, they might actually have low iron. This is huge because we do not want to forget about our teenagers. If they have low iron prior to starting menstruation, it'll be very hard for them to keep their iron up throughout their teen years. And don't forget about our male teens with selective diets, vegans and vegetarians, or if they are very, um, very active athletes, they also can be at risk for iron deficiency. Pregnancy. Did you know that 30% of pregnant women are iron deficient in Canada? That is a big number. This is very important to know, and we will discuss why later on in the other slides. And a recent UBC study showed that 80% of women in the study had inadequate iron levels. And since we know that the pregnant mom's iron levels are a predictor of the baby's iron stores at birth, this is a big problem. All right, so now that we have talked about the importance of iron, 
how do we know what to look out for? So here are 12 signs and symptoms of iron deficiency in children and adults. This one's easy. Dark under eye circles, you'll be able to see that right away at your kids or yourself. Number two, tantrums, moodiness, behavioral changes, anxiety. In adults without adequate iron, there can be changes to the brain function and structure that can increase the risk of depression, anxiety, and irritability. Number three, reduced immunity, frequent colds and flus, and reoccurring infections. If you or your child is frequently sick, go and get your iron levels tested. Many people actually find out they have low iron because they've been constantly sick and they've gone to the doctor and they've done a blood test. Number four, craving ice, dirt, or clay. This is known as pika. Pika is the compulsion of eating non-food items. It is a symptom of iron deficiency. For adults, you normally see them chewing ice as their pika portion. Number five, stunted growth. Smaller stature than other children their age, muscle weakness, less physical stamina than non-deficient kids. If you are winded walking up a flight of stairs or you can't sing a full song in the car, this could be you. Number seven, poor motor skills, slower to learn new tasks like crawling. I always feel so bad for this child. Number eight, difficulty concentrating and learning. As an adult, you might notice this while you're trying to focus at work or in a meeting. Now, with kids going back to school, we normally pick up on the difficulty concentrating and learning. So if your child has been flagged for having a learning difference, do make sure that they're also getting their blood work done to see if they have any nutrient deficiencies as well. Number nine, difficulty sleeping and tiredness. This is a hard time falling asleep and also staying asleep. This is how we found out my daughter was iron deficient. She did not sleep through the night for two and a half years. And as soon as we went to the pediatrician, the first thing they mentioned was iron deficiency. And after our blood test, we did find out that she was anemic. Number 10, cold hands and feet. This is due to not enough oxygen-rich blood circulating the body. Number 11, restless legs. This is not just due to magnesium, but iron does play a role in restless legs. 12, dizziness, fast heartbeat, rapid breathing. You may get this from just getting up from your chair or putting your clothes away. Again, it has to do with not enough oxygen circulating the body. Here is a simple check you can all do right now at home. All right, so we wanna pull down our eyelid and inside should be bright red. If it's white, go and get your iron levels checked. Now that we know what to look out for, let's talk about how children become iron deficient. There are many reasons, but here are six common ones. Number one, if mom is iron deficient or anemic during pregnancy, then the baby is at a higher risk to be born deficient. Also, premature, low birth weight, and problematic births are all linked to iron deficiency. Number two, poor digestion or absorption. This can be from digestive disorders or the type of iron they are eating. Number three, iron needs are not being met by the diet alone, especially if you have a selective or picky eater. Number four, blood loss resulting from injury, bleeding disorders, menstruation, digestive conditions like ulcers, Crohn's disease, or colitis. Number five, simply being a growing infant or child can cause low iron. Number six, sports and exercise. Athletes can lose iron through sweat and due to the building of new red blood cells. Athletes need more iron to build hemoglobin to carry oxygen for optimal performance. This is a very good did you know. Calcium and casein, a protein found in milk, inhibits the absorption of iron from foods and supplements in adults and children. Doctors do not recommend that cow's milk be given to children under one year of age because calcium blocks iron absorption. And don't forget, if you drink quite a few lattes in a day, this can also be you. So getting iron from fruit, food. Here are the iron-rich foods we should be eating weekly. I know in my house, my kids only like three items on this list. So what about your families? You know, we talk a lot about kids being picky, but adults are just as picky when it comes to what they eat. The only difference is they're the ones making the choices at the grocery store. So not all iron-rich foods are created equal. There are two types of iron found in food, heme and non-heme. Let's look at those now. 
So heme iron is the iron found in animal flesh, and it provides the best absorption and raises hemoglobin and ferritin faster than non-heme forms of iron. Heme iron is found in seafood like shellfish, fish, and from animal sources like chicken, beef, and lamb. The absorption rate for heme iron is from 15 to 35%. While it may be tricky to convince children to eat enough heme-containing foods, it is important to try and include high iron-containing foods whenever possible. Thinking about chicken strips, meatball skewers, candied salmon, ground turkey and pasta sauce, there's lots of options for kids and adults to enjoy. So did you know we can only absorb around 2 to 20% of iron from plant foods? Phytic acid, which is found in whole grains, seeds, legumes, and some nuts, can decrease the absorption from the iron in the food. If you do not eat animal-based iron, which is heme iron, make sure you're eating adequate amounts of plant-based iron foods or supplementing. So here are our daily iron requirements. How much iron do we need? The amount in this chart is our daily needs and these help prevent you from getting iron deficient. If you have multiple signs and symptoms of iron deficiency, you will need to get a blood test to determine how much more iron you need and your doctor would give you that amount. If your ferritin, your iron stores are low and you're only taking the daily amount, you're never gonna get back up to where you need to be. This is a big one. We have this conversation a lot at the office. People also email us about this. So if you or your child is exhibiting signs and symptoms, as we listed before, make an appointment with your doctor and have your child's iron levels tested and yours. Adults should be getting this done about once a year. So ask your doctor for both hemoglobin and ferritin. They don't always test for both, so make sure you ask. And since having your children's blood work done can take more effort than an adult's, ask your doctor what other tests they may feel are very important to do at the same time, so you only have to go once. For example, getting heavy metal tests done at the same time as your iron. If you are hesitant to have your child's blood work done, make an appointment at the children's hospital in your area or call the Life Labs ahead of time and ask for a specialist for kids. So there's also programs at BC Children's Hospital that will help you through this process and they'll be there with you to make sure you and your child have a good experience getting blood work done. So for adults, a normal ferritin score is over 100. 100. And from what we hear from, well, when I was pregnant and from doctors and midwives is that it's so common to see women with low iron that we're almost brushing it off as normal, but it is not normal. We need to have our ferritin above a hundred. And for kids, the possible iron deficiency starts around 20. We have been told that 30 to 30 ferritin is where you start to see behavioral problems. But where we really want our kids to be is 50. So this actually right here is my daughter's ferritin test from when we first started taking iron supplements. She had a ferritin of 14. And believe me, from 14 to 30, it was a big difference in her behavior and her sleep. And remember, the amounts on iron supplements in health food stores are the maintenance doses. So if it is a maintenance dose that is just going to keep you where you are at, it will not treat your iron deficiency. That amount you get from your doctor and you would increase from a maintenance like a health food store brand like Kidstar Biofee, you would go to the level the pediatrician has recommended. So can you get too much iron? This question is also oft, often asked. So the answer, of course, is yes, but you would need to take high doses for a prolonged period of time or a single very high dose. That would be more like a child getting into an adult's therapeutic iron supplement that was not stored properly. Other reasons could be inherited, like hemochromatosis, which causes the body to absorb too much iron from the diet, so your body can't regulate the iron they're getting from food. Now, people with hemochromatosis can still become iron deficient, so it is very important for them to monitor their iron levels as well. When a person becomes pregnant in Canada, they have routine blood work done in the first trimester, and blood disorders are usually identified at this time. And of course, they would follow up with the baby as well after birth. We always want to make a big point about supplements and food that we should always be keeping an eye out for what's on the label. And that leads us into 
when purchasing products, any product that you're purchasing, make sure you read the entire label, the front of the label with the medicinals and the non-active ingredients as well. And when you're looking at iron products, make sure you're looking at the elemental value of the iron because that is how much iron you're actually getting from the product. And ensure that the age group you're purchasing for is listed on the bottle. So if you're buying a children's product, make sure that, that age group is on the label. And we have our nice long list of do not purchase these ingredients. They are unnecessary and you do not need them in yours or your child's supplements. What else you don't need is sugar. So according to a 2015 Statistics Canada report, children between the ages of two and eight were getting 101 grams of sugar a day, which is equal to a whopping 24 teaspoons of sugar. Sugar causes many negative health effects, including dental decay, obesity, acne, mood disorders, type two diabetes, cancers, heart disease, just to name a few. Consuming sugar blocks the absorption of vitamin C, D, potassium, and magnesium. Consuming sugar turns off the virus fighting portion of your immune system for several hours. So the microphages, they slow down to a slug's pace and they cannot do their job engulfing viruses and bacteria. So with your supplements, just say no to sugar. Artificial colors. Here are the colors of the chemical rainbow and none should be in your food or supplements. They are also commonly found in pain and fever medication and prescription drugs. So blue number two is linked to ADHD, allergies, and brain tumors. Caramel color harms the immune system and increases cancer risk. This is what makes Coca-Cola brown. So yellow number five damages DNA, increases cancer risk, and depletes zinc. Yellow number six is linked to food allergies, eczema, ADHD, thyroid tumors. Red number 40 is linked to hyperactivity, allergies, asthma, and lymphoma. Titanium dioxide is a class 2B carcinogen, and it is used to make things white or opaque. This one is commonly found also in makeup products and skincare and also in sunscreens. So red number three promotes hyperactivity, DNA damage, and thyroid cancer. Green number three was banned in the EU because it was linked to testicular and bladder cancer. So moving on to the flavors that you can see. So artificial flavors are from synthetic chemicals. They mimic flavors found in foods and companies use artificial flavors because they are cheap and because they are synthetic, they pack a powerful flavor punch. Artificial flavors are known to give undesirable effects on health, like headaches and allergies. In 2018, the FDA banned seven artificial additives found in artificial flavors. Six of those were shown to cause cancer in lab animals. As a mom, I could not find supplements for kids that did not contain the unhealthy ingredients like alcohols, sugars, harmful preservatives, artificial colors, and flavors that my kids would actually take. So the first product line I developed was the Biofi iron supplement line for the whole family because my own daughter was iron deficient and we could not find a product that she would take that I liked the ingredients that she liked the taste. And I knew I was not the only parent out there struggling to find a better option. So how is Biofi iron different from other supplements? Well, we use a micronized and microencapsulated iron that doesn't stain your teeth, cause stomach upset or digestive issues. And best of all, it does taste great. We do have an iron for every age group and preference from an unflavored drop, a chewable and a tasty liquid. So many common iron supplements can cause stomach upset, constipation, and stained teeth. Some even have instructions on the label that tell you how to get rid of the stained teeth after it has happened. So because iron, because Biofi iron is micronized and microencapsulated, it travels past the stomach and to the small intestines to be absorbed. The small intestine is the part of the digestive system that is responsible for absorbing nutrients which is why it is important that our supplements make it to the intestines. So we do have a product for every age and prefer a preferred method of delivery from the unflavored drop, which is great. You can see that there it's for zero months and up. It is great at six months when you're starting to introduce iron rich foods and your kids just are not eating them. Cause remember, if we're not eating the foods, we are not getting the iron we need every day. And children from basically birth until 18 are just growing constantly and they need to have their nutritional needs met 
or nutrition deficiencies can happen. So this one here is great, the drops, because it's unflavored. It mixes into that squeezy pouch. Don't even know it's there. You've got your iron for the day and you can move on. All of these products have maintenance doses. So these are the amounts of iron you need to take every day to maintain your iron levels. And then the doctor would tell you if you needed to take more than the label. We also have the chewables. We have an unflavored, which is a nice little sweet taste, and then a grape flavored as well. And our lovely liquid there, that is also for one and up for an adults love this product. And same with seniors. It's a really easy way to get your daily iron needs met. And I wanted to make sure we had lots of time for questions. So here we go. Um, we, I wanted to thank everybody for coming tonight to listen to the talk about iron deficiency from ages and stages for kids. And do make sure you subscribe to the Kidstar newsletter as well, because we have a lot of cool things that we're having coming up in the summer to make sure you stay on top of it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so if anyone has any questions, uh, please drop them in the chat now, and I will be happy to read them out to Caitlin and get some answers. Uh, while we're waiting for questions to come in, Caitlin, I was wondering if you could um, maybe explain a little bit about what what you mean by elemental. I know oh, that yes. we get this question asked in the store, and maybe you could just dive into that a little bit. Of course, it's a very good question. So the elemental portion of the iron. So every ingredient has let's say it's 100 milligrams of an ingredient, but of that ingredient, you only have so much iron in it. So the elemental portion is the portion of that that is what you're actually getting from the iron. So for us on our labels, we put the elemental value. So 10 milligrams elemental, 15 milligrams elemental iron. That's the actual amount of iron you're getting to your body. Thank you for that. And then I was also wondering um, the unflavored drops. Uh, do they have like a little sweet taste or can you taste anything, the flavor they, of them? They are, are the mixed. Unflavored? With, yeah, they are mixed <laughs> with MCT oil. So the actual taste you probably get is MCT, which is kind of a benign taste. And then the actual iron, because it's coated in a starch, it kind of tastes like a starch. So it really is very mild. I would say there's almost no flavor whatsoever, but you kind of get a little hint of starch. But we do have um, a large community that follows us through Instagram and Facebook that um, with behavioral differences, and they actually use it even for their teenagers, knowing that there's no compliance issue because the kids can't taste it. Yeah, that's everything. That's awesome. Uh, we don't seem to be getting any questions in. Um... Yeah, I just want to remind everyone, if you do have a question, drop it in the chat now. Also, make sure that you wait um, and look for that email from Choices because uh, we want to send you a nutrition buck. Uh, so we do need you to fill out the survey um, and then we're going to send you a nutrition buck uh, to your physical mailing address. Um, so now a question has popped in the chat here. It says... For women on their periods, is it better to have higher dose of iron? So the maintenance dose for menstruating adults is 15 milligrams of elemental iron. So that's the daily dose. But if you have very heavy periods, I would get their iron levels checked. And then you'd know how much more you can take. And then once you get to the ideal ferritin of 100, then you can go back to the maintenance dose every day. Thank you for that. I think that's all that we have for questions. So that sounds great. Oh, yeah. and I forgot to I forgot to say that the BioFi Kids Star products are on sale at Choices right now. So it's a great time to head into the store. And we have very good air conditioning running in the store right now. <laughs> <laughs> at least at Abbotsford we do. So I got, a, <laughs> I got a jacket on. So if you're looking for a reason to cool off, come by and check out some iron at Choices. <laughs> it's a perfect reason. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for your time and sharing all that information with us. Um, and thank you everyone for, for joining us tonight. Um, and uh, you can find uh, 
our live events on our YouTube channel. So you just have to click on the choices channel and go to the section that says live and you can see all of the presentations. So if you've missed one or uh, there's one coming up that you want to see, but you're not gonna be able to make because maybe you're outside by the lake, be <laughs> sure that you can watch it later. And for future events, visit our website, choicesmarkets.com and don't forget to sign up for a nutrition tour. So thank you all for being here and thank you, Caitlin, so much. Thank you very much. Have a great evening, everybody. Good night.